As part of the Michigan Shoreline Stewardship Program, you'll learn to identify the four zones of your lakefront property. I'll help you find the shoreline zone on your property and explain why this area is so important and how you can protect it. The shoreline zone is a transitional area between the land and water. It begins at the top of the lake bank called the shoulder and extends to where the land meets the water, known as the toe. The shoreline zone will look different for every property. The shape of your property shoreline zone will vary based on factors such as the shape of the lake and the land, the water level, soil type, and wave and wind energy. These features also influence the amount and type of vegetation from lake to lake. Some properties, such as the one shown here, will have a very narrow shoreline zone. The slope of the property is very gentle and there isn't much space between the shoulder and the toe of the bay. Other properties, such as this one, will have a slight slope and there will be more distance between the shoulder and the toe of the bank. Still, other properties can have a very wide shoreline zone. Every lake has a natural amount of shoreline erosion due to waves, ice, and natural lake level changes. This happens over a long period of time and changes tend to be subtle. Development replacing native vegetation with lawns, removing aquatic plants, and raising lake levels all play a role in disturbing the lake balance. For example, removing aquatic plants also removes one of the lake's natural defenses against erosion. Aquatic plants absorb and reduce wave energy before they can hit the shoreline. Once they are gone, the waves can now directly hit the shoreline with all of their energy. As a result of many changes, shorelines can develop what is called accelerated erosion. Seawalls used to be seen as the only option to protect property from erosion. Common materials used to construct seawalls include concrete, steel, rock, or wood, but it is not uncommon to see a seawall made of more creative materials. All of this is done to stop a property from eroding, but did you know they also cause problems for the lake ecosystem? One problem is that there are barriers for wildlife that need to move back and forth between the land and water. Many of Michigan's reptiles and amphibians rely on both upland and nearshore areas for feeding, nesting, and raising their young. For example, turtles need to come onto land to lay their eggs, but they can't climb seawalls, so this puts their populations at risk. Seawalls can also create erosion problems. As waves pound against a seawall, the wave energy doesn't disappear. The energy deflected downward scours the lake bottom, which damages fish spawning areas, removes fish food, and stirs up bottom sediments. The sideways energy causes what is known as wave flanking. This causes erosion on neighboring properties, which then can result in more seawalls. But you can be the change. Start thinking about how you can, one, prevent erosion, two, use alternative erosion control techniques, and three, reduce impacts of existing seawalls and other structures. It is also important to consider that although seawalls are legal in Michigan, new installations will disqualify your property from receiving recognition from the Shoreland Stewards Program. There are many creative ways to meet your recreational needs while still maintaining native vegetation to prevent erosion on your property. Designate a small area for recreational access to the lake instead of the entire shoreline. Also, be careful to not store boats and docks long term in this area, as this can create bare spots that erode easier. If your property is experiencing shoreline erosion, there are protection options that don't require a seawall. These alternative erosion control techniques are known as bioengineering. Each design is unique to a property site conditions and will vary from low to highly engineered designs. Determining the best option for your property requires a full assessment of site conditions by someone who is knowledgeable in designing and installing bioengineered erosion control. To find out more about bioengineering and a list of certified natural shoreline professionals, visit the Michigan Natural Shoreline Partnerships website. For properties with existing seawalls, it is not always practical or feasible to replace it with a bioengineered solution. 
If your property already has a functioning seawall, there are several ways to reduce their impact on the lake. Consider placing fieldstone at the base of the seawall to help absorb wave energy and prevent scour. For shorelines with large riprap, allow organic debris and native plants to grow in between the rocks. The root structure of these plants will help stabilize the shoreline while providing additional habitat. Whether you are installing a new seawall, replacing an existing one, using bioengineering, or placing riprap in front of a seawall, a permit from the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy is needed. A healthy shoreline zone is critical for the protection of your property and your lake. On behalf of Michigan's Inland Lakes and all those who cherish them, thank you for your stewardship. Find out more information at our website at myshorelandstewards.org.